It's, it's, it's cost me a Concorde, a rail gun, and an air hockey table. We'll be able to be faster than the world's fastest bullet train. I have a name for it, name for it, which is called the Hyperloop. In 2013, Elon Musk sketched out an idea to use magnetically levitating capsules inside near vacuum chambers to create a new, super fast mode of transport that could connect LA to San Francisco in around half an hour. Fast forward to 2021, and two companies, Virgin Hyperloop and Hyperloop TT, are in a neck and neck race to turn the idea into a reality and develop the world's first commercial Hyperloop system. Virgin Hyperloop will be the first. I think that we are leading the race. They've both raised tens of millions of dollars from high profile investors, with Virgin founder Richard Branson backing that group's project. The speed we can put these tracks, these, these tunnels at, is Dramatic. Virgin has already run tests with passengers. Yes! Both companies have signed agreements to potentially carry paying passengers and goods by the end of the decade in the US and other countries. But there are still a lot of questions around safety, business models, and just how the technology can work in the real world. There's a lot of kind of things and details that need to be ironed out in order to know really whether it revolutionized transport. So, Will there be a winner in the race to bring Hyperloop into the real world? First, let's take a step back. Hyperloop is not a brand new concept. It's actually been around since the 17th century. Rosaline Walker is a transport analyst who is advising the European Union on Hyperloop as it assesses the potential of the technology. Lots of different variations of it have for one reason or other failed due to flaws in the systems or concepts. In the early 1800s, inventors were exploring using pneumatic tubes to transport people from point A to point B. And nowadays, that principle is being used in everyday things such as drive through banking. And magnetic levitation has been around for decades, like some of the trains in China and Japan that can run at more than 350 miles an hour. But projects that combine those two principles for electric-powered capsules that can reach speeds of up to 760 miles an hour have accelerated in recent years. Elon Musk um, has kind of reunited Hyperloop for the modern world. But Musk said he wasn't going to build it himself. Whilst he's not developing Hyperloop himself, he is active in this space. So after the launch of the white paper, his company SpaceX has hosted, I think, up to four competitions for Hyperloop. We, we built a Hyperloop test track adjacent to SpaceX just for a student competition. It was sort of quite, quite fun to do that, um, but it was kind of a hobby thing. As a result of that, there's been a number of Hyperloop companies that have developed. Hyperloop TT was founded in California in 2013 and says it has some $130 million in funding. Today we've got more than 800 contributors in 50 companies that are working together to develop it. Andres De Leon is Hyperloop TT's CEO. He says the company has created this full-scale carriage and a test track in Europe, and is teaming up with rail firms Hitachi and Altran. This is the f really the first time that the transportation industry, the legacy transportation industry, is really starting to believe in the aircraft, you know? Virgin has more money, about $400 million. Their CEO, Jay Walder, says not only is their test track longer, but it's also carried its first passengers. <laughs> We decided that we really needed to be able to build physical assets and to be able to show what we can do. We took a, a huge monumental milestone step where we saw the first people ride in a Hyperloop. I think it's a race to be able to get this done right now, and, and we really love the race. Some analysts say Virgin has the edge, mostly because of its patents and resources. This is really based on the facts. Is probably Virgin is ahead of the, the grain, and they, they've got the money for the R&D, so it kind of feels like they will they are winning the race, but who knows. The next big goal for both Virgin and Hyperloop TT is to build six mile-long test tracks by 2025. We want to break ground. Uh, in, in West Virginia soon to be able to, to do that. We hope to have the commercial prototype in Abu Dhabi up and running in two and a half, three years. Governments, including the UAE and Europe, have evaluated the feasibility of Hyperloop projects. And both companies have studied how they could connect U.S. cities less than 900 miles apart, like Kansas City and St. Louis, or Chicago and Pittsburgh. The Department of Transportation said some Hyperloop projects could be eligible for federal grants. We're working toward the certification of this technology uh, by, by 2025, and that gives us the ability to go forward not as um, 
uh, technology, but as a transportation system. But before you can run hyperloops across the U.S., you would need to get permission to build huge infrastructure, which could meet resistance. Even Elon Musk has run into problems. He's invested in a company called The Boring Company, which is an infrastructure and tunneling company focusing on trying to reduce the cost of tunneling. When The Boring Company planned to dig tunnels under Los Angeles in 2018 to reduce traffic, it was sued by locals and had to build another tunnel in a different part of the city. Similar tunnels could also be used by Hyperloops. You can picture then a Hyperloop in a tunnel g yes. running quite, quite long distances. Exactly. Hyperloop companies also have to figure out passenger safety and business models. The, the major risk is around, you know, having vehicles traveling at speeds uh, faster than any other public transport mode we've ever had before, operating at very short intervals to each other inside braking distance in a very inhospitable environment. So that is the, if there's an a, a incident, you know, um, you're enclosed in a vacuum tube, which is not ideal for breathing. Experts worry sudden acceleration to such a high speed in a windowless chamber could also make passengers sick. The cost of Hyperloop travel could also be too high for most people. And if terminals had to be built on the outskirts of cities, the whole system would be less efficient. By the time you've transited to those um, Hyperloop terminals and gone through security checks, etc., etc., then that undermines the speed advantage that you've got. Addressing these concerns, Hyperloop TT and Virgin Hyperloop have both said they've developed systems to keep people safe but the first Hyperloops may not be carrying passengers at all. Our future ports will integrate Hyperloop technology for synchronized, seamless, intelligent movement of cargo. Freight will absolutely be the first type of Hyperloop system, I think, on the market. And it's not necessarily the biggest benefit, but it's a way of testing the concept and getting people used to it without having that passenger risk involved. As to who will win between Virgin and Hyperloop TT, for now, both companies are benefiting from the hype. You're seeing Hyperloop as an industry. This is Hyperloop with a, with a small h. Uh, it's the way we think about the word train, for example. And, and, I, and I think that's great. This shouldn't be just about one company. It should be about building an industry. I think that there is a space for two companies. And I think that it's good for the industry that there are more than one big company, you know, uh, trying to develop the app.